And you're with Janine Preston of Life is a Beat. And of course, we're at Pawati, which is the Pearl of Africa Travel Expo here in Uganda. And having been at, at, the, at the Tourism Expo, we've bumped into some really amazing people. And certainly one of the people I know that you're going to want to, we're going to want to talk to is Elaine Saint-Ange from Seychelles. What a beautiful part of the country. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good. It's good that we, you are from South Africa, yes, I'm from correct. Seychelles, and we meet in Uganda. Isn't that and amazing? that shows you that Africa is one at the end. If we make the effort to move further from our own coastlines, we will find that we discover new things. I am lucky to be from Seychelles, to live in Seychelles, the seventh generation born there. My so I am very, very lucky. We started at the beginning, but I've had a life in tourism and only in tourism with a touch in politics. So I've had a full life but a full life of studying hotel management and then uh, sales and marketing and how to manage tourism boards. So I've, I've had that full, full working period all through my youth, my adult life, and then ended up as Minister of Tourism. So how does Minister of Tourism, being a Minister of Tourism, does that allow you the freedom to start looking at the world slightly differently in tourism? Because you're looking at it from a different perspective? Well, I think the... Seychelles is a different cup of tea, I think. Different because we depend on tourism. I know some presidents in the past of Seychelles said, it's our bread and butter. Others came in and said, it's the bread, butter, and the jam sitting on top of the toast. Oh it, we depend on tourism. So for us, the line coined by the founding president, James Mankam, said, we are friends of all and enemies of none. So with that line, when I entered the Ministry of Tourism as minister, I said, we must keep on building the bridges of friendship. We must keep on being the friends of everybody. Seychelles never forget. It's the one, one of the smallest countries of Africa, but also one that you enter with no visa. We have no visa requirements for anybody. So that says a lot how we not only say that we believe that we are friends of everybody, but we live it. I know South Africa claims to be the rainbow nation, but Seychelles is the... We live as a rainbow people. And I'm sure you're the part of gold at the end of the rainbow. Totally. There's <laughs> one. There must be one before it disappears. <laughs> and that's certainly where you are. In terms of Seychelles, how does it fit into the African uh, way of life? Because you are uh, on the coast and you're an island of Africa. How does that fit into tourism within Africa? Well, I think more can be done to fit in the tourism setup of Africa. As president of the African Tourism Board, and you've interviewed our executive uh, chairman, we believe that Africa must have more connectivity amongst ourselves. We must be able to play that card that once you've entered a country, especially today, where people are talking sustainable tourism, long flights, do they do one country or do they do three or four? Seychelles is an ideal stopover after a safari, after a spell enjoying the, the continent of Africa. And then you stop in Seychelles, you let go, you relax, you find yourself before your, before your trip home. And I think Seychelles can probably do more. My role here is not talking about Seychelles in, in, in but Uganda. But it's lovely to hear about it because I think you beat the hell out of Maldives. <laughs> well, it's and very you're different. you're so reachable because you're reachable from South Africa. You're certainly a much more, um, a much more exclusive destination than Mauritius. So for us as, as South Africans and as Africans, what better place to go than Seychelles? We keep saying we're one stop away from everywhere, <laughs> exactly. the whole world. But I think what we... We know Seychelles is an ideal tourism destination. When we speak about things that you know, if we say we've got clear blue seas, it, it is clear blue seas. You really do, and you have a bird island. If we say we've got white sandy beaches, there are white beach. sandy beaches. You and do. if we say it is hot year round, it is hot year round. Correct. And if we say we live like a rainbow people, we do live like the rainbow people because of the mixtures of people. Seychelles is blessed because there was no one when it was discovered. So as and, people arrived... And if I'm correct in saying this, I had spoken to somebody about Seychelles earlier this year at WTM, and we were talking about full board and half board, and they were saying that the one thing the hotels don't encourage is full board because they want you to use the restaurants in and around the hotels. And that's so unusual 
for a country to get that involved. So I take my hat off to you to support as many of the public and the community as you can, just as much as Uganda does that. My line to that has been very simple. A, a visitor, a tourist, yes. who spends his hard-earned cash <laughs> to come to the country, to come to Seychelles, yes. must not be a prisoner. He must be free he to move free. around. Absolutely. If you keep him there, dinner, bed and breakfast, he's a prisoner. We must let him free. Absolutely. Let him. If a bird is in your hands and you let it go and it comes back at night, it's yours. If you're going to tie him there and make sure that he eats every meal there, it's not yours. You're keeping him there by force. By force, absolutely. Let the person enjoy themselves. So we must have the... So the well packages. done to that though, because when I heard that I thought, how many other people have the foresight to recognise that? Because those hotels are supported by those restaurants, which supports the community, because there's work for the community. And so the, the line of communication goes so much longer, because it goes further and further back. You see, the, this is the true way that we describe sustainable tourism. It's sustainable because everybody partakes in it. Everybody benefits. Everybody benefits from it. And if the little men down the road who has a little cafe, is enjoying the guests from that big Correct. hotel, he will defend the industry. He will protect the industry. He will make sure nobody tempers with the industry because he's part and parcel. And if we encourage the whole island, when the president of the islands, a few years ago, when I was minister, I got him to, I pushed him and said, we must make a declaration that the Seychelles were people, that the Seychelles islands must claim back its tourism industry. It doesn't mean we don't want foreign people to come in and invest. What it means, our people must be part and parcel of the development of tourism so that they are not just workers, but that they are also able to become business people. And tourism, never forget, it's the one industry. It's not mining in Africa or it is not oil in Africa. It is the one industry that can put money directly in the pockets of each of its citizens. You can have a small business, you can have a handicraft, you can be fishing, you can be growing something. Everything is tourism at the end of the day. Correct. And if we all get together, it is sustainable because everybody is participating. Well, if you look at Uganda, their lodges, which are near the primates and in the, in the areas that are outside of Kampala, they are encouraged to buy their produce from the local community. Mm -hmm. They are also encouraged to send their guests into the community to go and visit and see how things are done. They are also encouraged to buy all their gift shops are not foreign gifts. They are not from a factory in Kampala. They are made from the local community. Yes. And they therefore support the locals. The locals in turn support the hotel or the, the lodge. And I always think all of us have so much to learn from that. We don't live in a silo. We don't live in a little island by ourselves. We are supported by those around us. And I wish more people would see the way tourism, the way that you've just described it, and the way Uganda does it. You see, Uganda, I think it's launching itself from a pad. Uganda will make heavy waves as it moves along. I think they've got three people today running the three branches of tourism of Africa, of the Uganda, in Africa that have broken the molds of, of Africa. You have the CEO, Lily, who is a dynamic young lady, and she's a woman. Correct. A woman today, in 2024, who's leading tourism of a big country that is making strides in the forefront of tourism. You have the new chairperson, Pearl, who's another lady, who's also coming out showing by experience, because she works as a tour operator, showing by experience how Uganda can move forward. And the appointment of the CEO of, uh, of the Ugandan Airlines, Jennifer, three women leading Africa's tourism industry of a big country is marking, and I think the world should watch the space. You will find successes that we haven't seen because their determination and their commitment to Uganda, to tourism and to Africa is remarkable. And they also work within their communities because I follow Lily on some of the social media networks to see what she's up to because I publish the Pearl of Africa magazine so I like to write a bit about what she's doing. 
and she treats everybody from the person who makes a basket and I must tell you I'm in due respect for those people because I saw how one was made um, I see that she spends time with that person and she also spends time with ministers so she goes from the upper spectrum right to the spectrum of where things are actually created and for that I think she's amazing I really yeah, yeah I follow her as well on, on LinkedIn and I see her announcing the sunrise by a Correct. lake yeah. or walk in the bush or walk on the long bridge I often sit in Seychelles and say chapeau to her she's dedicated but she shows commitment and commitment. tenacity Absolutely. and that is novel but it shows you that she's doing it with her heart it's not just a job it's not just a job and no, I think that is why I, I salute job. Lily a lot and uh, and we can see the changes, the transformations that have taken place. And, and the warm hugs that people get. Yes. You don't get a handshake. When I arrive or I see Lily, I get a warm hug. A, a, a hug that means something. I've noticed with others, she does have a, ha a handshake. But with others that she knows well, they get a hug. But you see, the, she's lucky. I think the three ladies, they're leading tourism, including the airline, yes. which is part of tourism. Jennifer, yeah. The three ladies are lucky. They have the support of the head of state and the support of the government. So that says a lot. Often you can have people appointed and then left there by themselves to vegetate. To just, to just battle through. <laughs> and here they have the support and I think they will do well. And we have to salute the government of Uganda to have taken this step forward and putting the necessary support behind them. Elaine, I know you're busy and I know I kept you waiting and I do apologize and I know you have to rush off, but I really appreciate your time. In closing, what would you like to say? I want firstly to say thank you to Uganda. Setting a trade fair, a tourism trade fair, in this day and age is not an easy feat. Uganda has done it. Uganda keeps on doing it. And Uganda has shown that it gets bigger. My call for Africa because they bring in buyers from all over the world. Correct. My call to Africa is to rally, rally together, to ensure that when a buyer from the States, from China, from Russia, from anywhere in Europe comes here, we are all there to showcase our own respective country Correct. or islands or part of the trade. Let us make this the... We all travel to London for World Travel Market. Why don't we travel to Uganda for Africa travel market that is the pearl of Africa in Uganda? I so agree. I think every country should appreciate that each country is their host at some point because they appreciate others. And the same way in South Africa, we have all the countries coming to our shows. I think the other, I think the other, the other way applies. They need to also make an appearance at other Africa trade shows. Totally. So well done for supporting that initiative. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on, uh, it's on your program. Pleasure. I'm Janine Preston of Life is a Beach, um, and we're at the Pearl of Africa trade show. Thank you, Elaine, for your time. Pleasure. I will now let you go. <laughs>